Y'all stand, let's sing, He Set Me Free.
to see everyone this morning. We're glad you come to be with us. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. Y'all made it possible for this day. It's good to have Brother Calvin and his family here today. Brother Calvin, we're praying for you. Let's remember to pray for the ones on our prayer list. One that's in the hospital, one that's had surgery, pray for them. And just remember that God is in control of it all. If y'all would, let's stand and sing. If I could hear my mother pray again. be no children's church this morning. No children's church this morning. Sister Margot is going to come and do us a song and then uh, we have some more specials. Her prayers 
Um, the song that I chose slash Harley chose to sing this morning is one that I play um, at weddings a lot of time when grandmothers and mothers are coming down the aisle just because I think um, the title of the song is Great is Thy Faithfulness and, and God's faithfulness and his love for us, you know, is, I won't say it parallels because it's way greater than anything we could ever imagine, but our mamas are pretty much the closest thing to it because regardless they're going to love us. They're going to provide for us. Um, so I asked her to sing this song this morning just because it reminds me a lot of my mother and grandmothers and even those women who actually didn't, aren't blood related, but were mothers to me in some form or fashion. Oh. 
Comes all the way from Mississippi. Come on, Laura, Miss Laura, that Mary. Mary Laura Boyette. That's Cal Calvin's granddaughter. So you, y'all pray for her. She sings.
Well, amen. <laughs> Great is his faithfulness. <laughs> Even through technical difficulties. It's typically how it goes. You run through it, sound check, and it works great. Might need just a little bit more volume in the monitors here. Maybe we could start it over. His only son, his only son, and the heartbeat of heaven confounded our wisdom, but it's still the simple truth that sets me free. Wise men saw the baby boy, the angels called the Son of God, heaven's child, the great I am, was born to take away my sin through nail piercings. I believe, precious child, how can it be that God 
Wow, what an amazing spirit that's in this house today. I would love to tell all you mothers a happy birthday, a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> birthday too, if it's that today. I have something I'd like for you to read to you. A mother's love, there's no love like mother's. Her heart is filled with care, with Christ as her example. Her Savior's love she'll share. A mother's love is endless, not changing for all times. When needed by her children, a mother's love will always shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, every one. For all their tears and heartaches, a special work they have done. When days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on through many generations. God bless each one. Be thankful for your mothers who love is higher than all. From power God has given and strength from up above. And the author is unknown. So at this time, we would like to recognize all of our mothers. If you would please stand. Everybody stand. And these... Young men are going to pass out all your mothers a rose in appreciation for all that you do. Happy Mother's Day.
Well, glory. We could close up and go home, couldn't we? I appreciate the opportunity to share with you today. Brother I.B. is under the weather. or not? Well, yeah, he's under the weather and beside the weather and everything else. He's got a virus and it's, uh, it's got blisters all over his feet and his hands and everything else. So need to remember him in prayer this morning as we pray. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you on Mother's Day. I heard a couple of women talking not long ago, and one of them asking her says, well, if you had it to go over with again, would you, would you have children? She thought for a minute. She says, no, not the same ones. <laughs> I picked up a poem I want to share with you. You've already had one, but I want to share another one. It's called A Child's Prayer on Mother's Day. God in heaven, I thank thee this day on bended knee for the wonderful mother thou hast given to me. Her heart is kind and gentle, flowing with love and care. Her touch is warm and loving, her life a constant prayer. How she so often draws me into her arms to read God's holy word, the Bible, words that my heart should heed. How often do I hear her whisper my name in prayer. Never a childish problem, but she is always there. God in heaven, I ask thee, now while I bow, my, bow to pray, in thy great loving kindness, bless my mother today. thought that was really appropriate for today. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, the last chapter of the book of Proverbs, wisdom material, and this is, uh, this tells us in verse one that this is, uh, was written by King, Le King Lemuel, and this is words his mother had taught him, and this is what he saw in her, in life. Perhaps it is, uh, it is the, exactly what the, his mother looked like to him, and the big question is how do you look to your children, and how do you look to others? I'm gonna pick on mothers this morning, okay? Because it's Mother's Day. One of, the greatest, one of the greatest things in all the world, though, is to have a mother that is like the one he depicts here in the passage of Scripture. So I'll ask you if you'll stand with me once again as we read verses 10 through 31. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? Question mark. Her price is far above rubies. Her heart, the heart of her husband, does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoils. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and working willingly, willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and holds her hand holds the distaff. She strengthens out her hands. She stretcheth out her, excuse me, to the poor, yet she reaches also to the, her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow, for her household, and for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth. She delivereth girdles to unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household. She eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. But the woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we bow to give you thanks for this day and for the awesome privilege of life. 
We thank you for the opportunity to come and assemble ourselves in this place at the appointed time of worship. And we look, Lord, to you right now and ask you to speak to each of our hearts from your holy word. We pray, Lord, that our lives will be in tune with you to the point that when we leave this place, others can see and know that we've been with you. We come, Lord, this day for the purpose to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we thank you for that which has already happened as you are drawing us into your very fold in your arms. And I pray, God, even now that you'll speak to our hearts and direct us into the things you'd have us to know and to understand. May our lives be all that you'd have them be. And above everything, we pray you'd conform us to the image of your son. We're reminded of those who are less fortunate, those who are at home, those who are in the hospital, those in the nursing homes, Lord. Would you minister to each one, those that are homebound, and those who wait upon them. God, we pray you'll grant that which is right and good for them. Even now, we're going to thank you and rejoice in what you're going to do, for we ask it in the strong and powerful and saving name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and for his glory alone, amen, amen. As we look at the passage of Scripture, we see that the, the question, the thing that comes to mind how and where do you find a virtuous woman? As we look at this, the first thing that he pointed out here is he saw a virtuous woman. I picked up the meaning of that. If I hadn't lost it, I don't know what I'd done with it. I must have put it somewhere. Here it is. It says the term virtuous, it means a force of strength or of body and mind as it's used in this passage of scripture, meaning that there are their total being is focused in on what is going on. But in Luke 6, 19 and also 8, 46, you remember the story where the woman came to Jesus and touched the, touched the hem of his garment. And he says, virtue has left me. The term there means power. The very He recognized the power, the healing power left his body. And because of what the woman's faith reached for and what she touched about him, that she was healed. And therefore, the, the very power of God rested with her. In this passage, who can find this kind of woman, this woman whose fourth or force or strength of, of bind mind and body. If we look very close and he gives the description here, there are some things we need to see. First of all, he saw her value above a priceless gem. It's given there the term, the, the term uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Listen to me, nothing to compare with it. The term the ruby is used, it's incomparable because it's cut different and it's made different. But here, why did he say that? We see, we see here within her personage several other things, and one of them is the fear of God was, pers was her persistent faith, and as, as she expressed faith in Almighty God, he kind of closes out here with that, but he wants, uh, he wants to, us to understand that her faith was one that is persistent, not hit and miss, not here today and gone tomorrow, but it's something that you can count on, and you see it every day in her life as she lives her life. That should say something to all of us today. If there's one thing that we can have and we need to have, it is persistent faith. But you know the problem today in lives? Many times fear overreigns and overrules in lives. And let me tell you something. Where fear is, faith cannot work. And where faith is, fear cannot work. We need to understand what it means to have persistent faith as we learn to walk by faith, as Paul said, and not by sight. Many people today are walking by sight. Everything is by sight. Nothing is by faith. Where we need to draw from the conclusion here of what he said, that she had persistent faith. And he said that in verse 4. Look, looks, favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Faithfulness. Faith, I'll tell you what the church needs today. It needs some faithful men and some faithful women. Amen. We, when we understand what that term faithful means, it means that we're the same thing every day as we walk, listen to me, as we walk with the Lord. When we walk with the Lord, and if we walk with the Lord, I will guarantee you that we will grow in faith every day because there'll be obstacles along the way that will test your faith. Test our faith. And the, listen to me, the only way that you can grow in faith and grow in your relationship with God is to be tested in your faith. The only way. You know that as well as I do. So here he found her. 
as, as one that was faithful. But there's something else we see in this. She was, produ- she was a productive person. She always had things that she was doing. Never sitting around idle. Idling, sitting around, or whatever you want to call it. There, there are many things that we have so many, what we call them, conveniences today. Women, you know what I'm talking about. We've got to have all those household conveniences so we'll have more time to do what we want, right? Am I right? But many times in the process of all those conveniences, there are also things that happen because of them. We count on them too much, do we not? We do. But here, she was a productive person. She saw and looked ahead. The second thing we see, she was a prudent person. I forgot and left that out. Didn't mean to have it on my island, but put it on the computer. Prudent, she was a prudent person. How many people today that you know are prudent? I mean, from a standpoint of their life every day in their action and activities. She was one of those, if you look, look very close at the scripture. The second thing as we move her along, she saw, he saw her as a good worker. Verses 13 through 19. We read that, but I want you to look at it. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. If you go through and read through this text, and I was going to preach again on this tonight and use this, because if you read through this text, you see her hands mentioned six times, but it refers to them several different times of what she's doing. Her hands were those who were busy doing the things that need to be done, that need to be done. Those hands that were there, those hands that were used for all kind of situations and all kind of problems. She was one who was a good worker. She prepared, it tells us there that she prepared food and meals for her family and for others, and I guarantee it wasn't peanut butter and jelly sandwiches either. <laughs> My wife, she loves sandwiches. And I asked her when I say, why do you love sandwiches so much? She said, well, when I went to school, we didn't have sandwiches to carry to school. We carried something that was left over in a little bucket or whatever we carried it. One time she she swapped that with a girl, another girl, give her her mayonnaise sandwich, and she got food poisoned in front of the first time she had to spend some time in the hospital because of that. But she loved sandwiches. And the reason for that because she did not have sandwiches when she came along. But many of us, we are sandwiched out today, are we not? Sandwich for breakfast, sandwich for lunch, sandwich for supper, whatever it is. Sandwich here, sandwich there, sandwich everywhere. With God, you slide to heaven, we'll be on a sandwich. So, sandwich. Now let's get off of that. She prepared her food. Look what it says. She purchased the knees and in selling the goods in verses 16 through 18, it talks about that and I've read that. Don't need to read it again, but she was one who was very efficient in doing whatever was necessary, purchasing the needs of her family, selling the goods that she made. But also it talks about in verses 17 and 19, being prepared for the task at hand without complaint. Look at verse 17 with me once again as we look at this. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. There's a term that could be used for hands as well as she done and worked. Look what it says in verse 19. She layeth her hands t- she layeth her hands to hold the spindle, to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She was one who was busily engaged in doing whatever was necessary to provide for her family without complaints. Without how many of us complain? Anybody here ever complain? I bet some of you complained this morning, didn't you? Had to get up out of bed. Some of you want about, about fixing breakfast making sure everybody had something to eat. Well, that's neither here nor there. But she was one who was willing to do whatever, a task at hand. So we see she was a good worker. A good worker is one who works without complaints, is it not? Some of you children, let me ask you the question. Do you ever hear your mother complain about things she's done for you? Do you remember her ever griping and belly aching about changing your diaper when you was young? You ever hear her gropping and complaining about having to fix you food? Prepare for you? Dress up your wounds where you got hurt? Do whatever's necessary so that you could be the person she would have you to be and the Lord would have you to be without complaints. So we see 
She was one who was a good worker. The third thing is, as we move along, he also saw in her a good neighbor. Look in verse 20 once more. Look what it says. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor. That's the singular hand there, not hands. She stretched out her hand to the poor, but look at the next word. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Hands singular, hands plural. In other words, whatever was the occasion, whatever was necessary, she took her hand and she gave to the poor whatever was needed, whether it was material things, money, whatever it might have been to help them. But then there's the hands involved. Look what it says there in the last part of verse 20. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy, doing whatever she can to ease their pain and the misery. If we understand the, the terminology here, this is not just feeling sorry for them. The term here is more than feeling sorry for them. This is kind of like feeling with them, empathy, if you please, not just sympathy, but empathy. She felt with them and she felt for them and that's why she got involved in their life because maybe back in her life, she could see where maybe she was there at one time. You know, sometimes because God has blessed us so much, we forget about those who are less fortunate than we. We forget about it. We forget about the things that may, they may be standing in need of right now because God has blessed us so much our eyes has become so dimmed. So dimmed. We look at the wrong things. We look at the silver, the gold, the things that we might have and yet we see those who are without. We need to look through the window and not through the mirror. Amen? Hmm. I better move on from there. She was a good worker. She was a good neighbor. By sharing, it says verse 20, means, the term there, the term there means spreading herself. This is more than pity or feeling sorry. It is empathy, as I said. Feeling with them, spreading herself out to help them however she possibly can. The fourth thing as we move along, she, he saw her as a good homemaker, housewife, if you please, in verses 21 to 27. I want to kind of camp out right there for just a moment if we can. Look what it says. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. The term there means she cares for her own. If there's something that is missing today in a lot of homes and a lot of families, the mother do not even care for their own anymore. Now I want you to listen to me very closely. We don't have time for them anymore. There's a four letter word that really spells love and it's T-I-M-E. T-I-M-E where mothers bunch up their children in the morning, run them by Hardy's or wherever it may be, Burger King, McDonald's, and, and get them something to eat. And then when they pick up school, they carry them by and get them something to eat. They don't have a family time anymore. Do you know that? Families don't have time anymore. Don't have time for themselves. Don't have time for each other. Simply because we don't understand what it means to be a family. A family means a togetherness a togetherness where we listen to each other, where we share with each other what's on our hearts and our mind. Many people today are missing out. We wonder why our, our world's in the situation. I'll tell you, it's because the family is broken down. I mean broken down because our culture, our society, what we, what we teach them is we don't have time for you. We don't have time for you. But she was one who shared with them. She saw then the importance of her role and she exemplified that role as a mother. The problem today is many don't know the role within the confines of what God expects. And I'm gonna hit on the fathers right here for a minute. The father is the one who is the spiritual leader of the household. You cannot get by with that without looking at that and realizing the responsibility of that. That is a God-given responsibility for you to be the spiritual leader of the family. 
The mother is the one who does the care of the home and takes care of the home. Many times this is left undone. But we need to understand that in the process of this, this is what it's meaning here, as she is one who exemplifies the role of a good homemaker. Verse 21 and 22 tells of her being uh, practical. Practical. Look at verse 21. She is not afraid of the snow. I've done read that. Verse 22. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. That means it's double lined, yo, if you don't know what that means. It's not just the hit run of the mill thing. It's something she's made and it's double lined for her family. Look at verse 20 there. Her husband, she cares for herself, in other words. If a mother doesn't care for herself, they can't care for anybody else. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. In other words, her husband is one who looks good. Not maybe his facial expression, but his clothing looks good. They're well taken care of. I pastored in a church where this lady, I mean, she had to have the best clothing that there was, but her husband come in whatever he could find and it didn't even look like it had been washed sometimes wrinkled and I thought about it. She may look think she looks good, but in my mind, according to the teaching here of God's word, she ought to have been caring about him because I believe the Bible says that we two become one, do we not? A man and a woman, not Jim and Sam. Two become one, one flesh. And when one cares for the other, then that shows love and appreciation one for another. So we see that as what she says here. The verse 23 tells us something. Look what it says, verse 23. She cares for herself. She cares for her husband. Look at verse 24. She maketh fine linen and selleth and delivereth girls to the merchandise. She, she cares, she's carefully in preparation for other things, for life in advance. As she looks by, by creating these things and by selling those things as we move on. Huh, importance. The importance of a housewife known by their commitment the fifth thing, he saw her beauty for what it was worth. Verse 28 to 31. I want you to look at this with me. Read it again. Many daughters have done virtuously. There's that term. But thou excellest them all. Mean over and above and beyond. Meaning going the third or fourth mile, not just the second mile. It means to do whatever is necessary, whatever and whenever. Look what it says. Favor is deceitful because some people are going to like you today and hate you tomorrow. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. My grandmother used to say that beauty is as beauty does. She also had another saying. She says, beauty is only skin deep and ugly is to the bone. Beauty soon fades away, but ugly will hold its own. Beauty, it will fade away. We will we'll not go there and touch on that very, I'll be, walk very close, close there. But beauty is vain. But the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. She shall be praised. Beauty is held by one in high esteem. Beauty is what we see in a person. And I've seen people whose their outward countenance was not beautiful as we would think beautiful, but their inward self made up all the difference in the world. Amen? Because of who they were, and not only who they were, but also whose they were. I believe if we could recap on all of this, we could see this woman was one who, whose life was sold out to God because she recognized that being sold out to God, she could be all that she needed to be for everyone involved. With our Sunday school lesson kind of dealt with that, dealt with that as I talked about the service and those relationships and also our job, the things we do at the job. We re need to realize that what we do, we do it to the Lord, not to the boss, not to the company, but we do it as we do it unto the Lord. And she recognized that. So we see in this the very expression of what it means to be that person that God called us to be. Let me tell you something. That applies to every one of us here today. 
I read a story several years ago of this boy who was very, very ashamed of his mother's hands, the deformity and the scars that were on her hands. And he would have her to wear gloves everywhere she went, out in public, have her to wear gloves because her hands were so disgusting. And one day they were having a parent teacher thing at school and she was uh, uh, appointed to speak or say something and she told why her hands looked like they did. Because when the baby, he was very young as a baby, maybe six months old, the house caught on fire. And when the house caught on fire before she could get in there and get him wrapped up, soak the blanket and get him wrapped up, she, she, she wrapped him up and put him up side of her head and she ran out of the house, but her hands were, were severely burned and scarred, third degree burns on her hands. And as, he told, as she told that, this young man got up from where he was and he come over to where his mother was and he says, Mama, let me take the gloves off because they have those scars, those scars said that you went the extra mile to save, to save my life. From then on, he never had problems with those scars again. But you know what? There's one who's got some scars in his hands. He's got some scars in his hand because he loved you, he loved me. He was willing to give his life there on Calvary so that you and I could know and have real life, abundant life, eternal life. And what we need to do is we need to realize that he come for the purpose to save us, to seek and to save us, what Luke says in 1910, to seek us out. And the Holy Spirit this morning may be seeking you out and speaking to your heart right now. You may be a mother, you may be a father, you may be a teenager, whatever it is. But Jesus willingly gave his life. And those hands later on, that young man comes to his mama said, after he got saved, he told his mother, he says, Mommy, your hands is beautiful. Let me tell you, Jesus is much more beautiful because he died on that cross to save not my life, but to save my soul from hell. Jesus did that for you. He's done that for you. Would you acknowledge that today? Would you respond to him today? A high school girl was helping her mother after supper. With her hands in dishwater, she turned to her mother in disgust and said, Mother, how can you stand washing dishes year after year? Her mother replied, My dear, I'm not washing dishes. I'm building a home for you and for Tommy and for Dad and for God. Let's pray together. Father, we bow to give you thanks for this day and for the precious, precious time we share together here on this earth. And I pray, Lord, this morning as we come to you, that our hearts are open to you, submissive to you, and to what you would have for us, because, Lord, you have the very best for us if we will only allow you to deliver it to us, give it to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, I do not know the hearts here today, but I know you do. And I pray, Lord, that if there's one that needs to come in reaffirmation of their faith, a rededication of their life, that you'd help them to take that step. If there's one here today that has never trusted you as Lord and Savior, that this would be the day of salvation. What better day than Mother's Day? Lord, there may be that person here that's going through some struggles and problems, and they need to come and just lay it all on the altar and give it all to you and allow you to work it out because you said you would. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Whatever decision needs to be made here today, Lord, we look to you for what you're going to do. And right now we're going to thank you in advance because we ask it in the name above every name, Jesus Christ our Lord, for his glory. Amen. As we stand together, sing our hymn of invitation, God has spoken to you. He's being honest with you. You be honest with him. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that I see.
in school, we had a play one time and Miss Claire Eccles got me to sing a song. That's before I could ever sing and I hadn't learned much since. But it goes like this. M is for the many things she gave me. O is for the fact she's growing old. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for every prayer she uttered. R is for the right she'll always be. Put them all together, they spell mother, the word that means the world to me. I pray that if your mother's alive, you let her know today. You let her know. Okay? Let's pray. Let's bow our heads together.